Hey marketers, I'm Maricy Fuentes and welcome back to the Flying Cat Marketing interview series. Today my guest is Max Brigada, who is the founder of Ada on Cloud, and we're going to be talking about convergent marketing, which is, he's the founder of convergent marketing, which is kind of the next step after inbound marketing. And we're going to be talking about how to connect all the dots between where all your customers are and start the conversation with conversational AI, which I didn't really know that much about, so you're going to be learning about it with me. Uh, and basically, he explains what this is like and how you can maintain a human connection while still using AI. So I'm just going to go ahead and dive right into it. If you did like this episode, please give it a like, subscribe, share with your friends and family, share the love, and I will see you in there. Hello and welcome back to the Flying Cat Marketing video series and today we are speaking to Max Brigada who is the founder of ADA and the inventor of Convergent Marketing. So thank you so much for talking to me today. How are you? Hi Mahiba. I'm very, very well. Amazing. I'm very happy to be here with you. Yes, I'm really excited to talk to you today about Convergent Marketing. So why don't you tell us what is convergent marketing? How is it different from inbound marketing or related to it? Good. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, your live show or your interview show. Uh, I'm so proud to be here. And uh, well, convergent marketing is a, it's a methodology. It's a methodology that it refers to the inbound marketing. I mean, uh, I've, been, I've been all my life doing inbound marketing from its crate. Is the is the real essence of, you know of the marketing, uh, and is the, the one that really works. It takes its time because uh, of, of course it needs to have uh, time to you know to implement and to create content and you know to understand where your consumer is on your on your on his customer journey and then go and you know and and talk to them as they like it. So, but the you know the the, the things with the marketing bond marketing was born in two thousand four. Uh, following by, uh, you know, a book that's been uh, created by Seth Godin in 1999 called The Permission Marketing. So probably the father of, you know, the first father of the bond marketing was Seth Godin with his permission marketing. So in 2004, two young guys called Brian uh, Allegan and Dar Kesh, that are the owner of Rapsport, yeah. uh, they came out with this great idea. So they, 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 the first years, what they did, they start, you know, evangelize this, uh, this inbound marketing, the methodology of creating content, attract people, and of course, convert them close and delight. You know, but the problem is in 2004, if you go back in the roadmap of the, of the digital marketing, we had no mobile and we had no social network. I mean, social network just born in 2004 with Facebook. And the first smartphone, just the first, or the first working smartphone came out on the market in 2007. So the idea for us, after a long, long analysis, I mean, myself, I've been working marketing all my life since just came out of the university. I was in a beautiful country because I reckon it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's, you know, it's, it's the place to be if you want to be in marketing and SaaS. And I was so, also in your region because I've been in California and San Francisco. Love it. Love it. <laughs> that, that's when I was young and crazy. <laughs> <laughs> now you're not young and crazy anymore. Uh, no, I'm still crazy, but not young. Not that young. I'm still getting crazy, but uh, I'm, I'm less young than what I was uh, uh, you know, at that time. Gotcha. And uh, the idea for us was, okay, you know, the, the, the consumer is moving. You know, there's a lot of trends saying that uh, the consumer is moving, is moving towards the mobile. So a lot of people uh, connect to an internet uh, content through, through their mobile. And uh, today we, we spend most of our time uh, on the social media. So for us, the, the conventional marketing is an evolution of inbound uh, because it takes into, into consideration two, uh, three things. The mobile, the place where everybody is and everybody you know, access an internet. Then you have the social media, where you, you need to attract people. Today we are on social media all the time. Social media understand, read, listen our communication, uh, and then they bring us, you know, content and promotion, and then artificial intelligence that is, of course, uh, the the next step. You know, the link 
between the mobile and the social media because it allows people through a, a natural conversation to get in contact. So you, you need to get in contact with the, the brand with the consumer. Uh, the, the idea is the same, to transform a, a stranger into a business ambassador, on, the, on a, on a what, client ambassador or whatever, back ambassador, whatever we want to call it. So through different steps. So we have seven steps, which is the first one gets into to use a uh, user persona, or buyer persona. And that's it's something that, you know, I had an, a marketing agency also, and in uh, 2000, from, from 2000, 2007. And uh, whenever I went to the clients, uh, or whenever clients came up to us and asked, you know, uh, I want a web page. I want to do some sort of actions. So my first question was, listen, my first reaction was, I need, to, I need you, before I even think about what we can do, I need you to answer to two questions. Why and who for? So why, why did he create this company? Don't tell me for money, because that is wrong answer. <laughs> Everybody creates company for money. Otherwise, it's only ONG. It's another, it's another company. So why do you create this company? And uh, I mean, what is the problem you solve with this company? Uh, and if the problem is uh, uh, already solved by the company, why your company is better than them? Okay, why people should buy you? So this is the first thing I need to know. And the second thing is, who is going to buy you? Because, you know... If I take into consideration what, when we create this, I know who's, what's the problem we solve. Uh, I know what is already existing in the market and how I can be, you know, what is my uh, uh, buy point? But also I know who's my customer. You know, I know who is going to buy this. So for that point, it's easier to create the first step. So you use a persona. Then once you create a user persona, you need to create a content, you know, that is related to use a persona. So this is the second step. And you need to create corporate content. Uh, and I almost ask, or almost suggest people to start with a video. You know, who, who better than the owner of the company explaining why did he create this company? And if you take it, you know, if you understand, everybody did that. You know, if you take the biggest business owner, Richard Branson, Steve Jobs, uh, among others, they all always did it, a video explaining why they created the company. Because it comes from inside, it comes from your, you know, from your heart. It comes from your soul. You know, who better than there is not a marketing uh, content, a landing page, or web page that can explain better than your soul uh, what you created for. And then you need to create a lot of uh, other content. You know, for example, let's take in, into consideration restaurants. I know if I'm not wrong, you're vegetarian. Are you? Yes, vegan. Vegan. Oh, even <laughs> even more detail. <laughs> So if I open a restaurant uh, and I want to get in vegan people, you know, of course I have to create contents for vegan. I have to create contents for vegetarian and content for yeah. people that are either not vegan or vegetarian. Because if I want Maiva to come to my place, I have to talk to her in a different way. You know, then I, I need to divide my database by, you know, profiling, by geographic position. So all that takes in the second step. Third step is lead generation. And today there is a huge misunderstanding about lead generation because everybody talks about uh, social media uh, advertising, no? And say, okay, it's not, you know, because people say, my company, go, it doesn't go to social media. Whatever, I mean, let's not talk about social media because social media is also LinkedIn. So if you, are a, if you are a professional service, you need to go to LinkedIn and not yeah. probably to Facebook. No? Uh, but you have a lot of more things to do. You, you can be in a Congress. You know, lead generation is how the hell you get that lead to come in. Because then you analyze the leads, first, first step. So the fourth step is analyzing leads, lead scoring. And then again, here you need to make a, a difference. You know, you sell online or you sell, you know, by phone. What is your selling uh, strategy? Because if your line is different than you are, if you are, you know, physically selling or selling by four. But you need to understand at that point what happened. Because then the next step is the nurturing. So you need to nurture your lead uh, in, in relation to what that lead uh, is telling you. So if you are selling in a video conference, in a phone call or physically, you know, you should understand uh, that that client, for example, is vegan, that lives in, uh, in Grafia, if I'm wrong, uh, whatever it is. <laughs> what, what? No, no, not far away from that. 
downtown over there somewhere. <laughs> so, uh, because if, if I wanted to get you in, I uh, at least have two profiling. You know, the place where you live and the place and the, and the food you're most suitable uh, to, to be attractive. Huh? And that for us is, uh, for everybody, must be uh, the ABC. And then, of course, you use the marketing automation and the conventional flow. You know, marketing automation helps every, you know, all this to be so smooth and easy. And the conventional flows uh, is when the machine gets into the communication. For example, I mean, uh, if I send out a landing page with contents and you have, you know, and you want to know more, uh, you can, of course, do the same stuff. Put a phone number, email, whatever. But why don't we, why don't we put a chatbot, you know, a virtual assistant that, you know, will answer uh, you know, what's your opening times? Because otherwise the consumer, you in this case, should call, what time you open, what your sort of food are. So all these sort of questions, you need to put it in a, in a conversational form in a chat. Why that is important? Because again, if you go by, by trends and the numbers and statistics, today we chat more than what we talk. So, you know, by, by WhatsApp, by, by me and you, we've been, we've been talking uh, uh, Instagram. And we both have our telephone number, I suppose. So <laughs> we could have just called. Uh, we chat because we know that for us it's the easiest way, probably, to get in contact and uh, having a quick answer. So basically, uh, we do the same thing. We, we attract, uh, then we convert, then we close and we delight. But for us, the starting point is not the blog and the web page, but the starting point is the social media because where uh, people uh, today stays. So that is the difference between inbound and conventional marketing. But the goal is the same. The goal is to transform a, a, a stranger into brand ambassador. So that is exactly the conventional marketing. Wow, amazing. <laughs> that was a, that's a, a lot of very thorough steps, which I, I see that it's similar to inbound. I mean, to me, inbound is kind of like an ideology of just attracting them, but I see that they are, it's kind of the next generation of it, right? But so my question is conversation bots, making it conversational. And I feel that now with everything that's happening, one of the biggest things um, that brands are struggling with is building a personal connection with their leads. So if you're talking about restaurants, maybe it's a little bit different because that's B2C, but in a B2B relationship, B people are buying from people. So where do you draw the line between using a conversational bot to connect with your audience or actually going out there and trying to build those relationships yourself? How does this work fit into convergent marketing? Okay. First of all, let me, let me say something that uh, I heard once and I love it. Uh, today, B2B or B2C, the difference is so small that it's probably we're going to talk age to age, not human to human. Yes. Uh, because at the, at, the, uh, at the end of the game, we are all, uh, we are all human to human. And I'll put the same example. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a business. Uh, I get business services. Most of the time, I find these business services on, on some social media page. And whatever it gets to my page, because, you know, for what I've, I've been defining myself in that page, Whatever I do, I take that screenshot and send that advertising to my marketing manager, say, hey, please do an analysis of this. So uh, today, the B2B, B2C, the only difference, unless you know you are not a B2B, an industrial B2B, that says something that it's not possible to be placed on social media, anything is, can be placed to social media uh, is, is doable with the conventional marketing. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing is about the uh, bot conversation. I mean... 1999, Clue Trade Manifesto, I don't know if you know it, it says marketing are conversations. So marketing is based on conversation. To me, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a three a three way thing. You know, the first thing in marketing, you need to create a relation. You know, if you yeah. don't create a relation, uh, it's impossible to create then the engagement. Uh, but how do you create the, the, the relation? You create a relation uh, through, uh, through conversation. You know, so me and you are creating a relation because at some stage we've been talking and we have the, the chance to have, you know, the voice and be talking to each other. And then, of course, the conversation gets to, uh, the, the, the communication gets to conversion. Uh, so at that stage, we need, I mean, if today, the most of the time we are chatting, uh, 
to to a chat, you know, app, to an app chat, which is WhatsApp or whatever it is, we have to give the possibility to consumer to get in, ton- in contact with any brand buying the by by a virtual or a, a chatbot. I hate the word chatbot, so I always call it virtual assistant or, or whatever bot assistant because chatbot is really makes sense, uh, make like we're doing a customer service. You know, chatbot is for customer service, but we are talking about marketing. So it's a virtual assistant, it's a marketing assistant. Because then at the same time, uh, today marketing has changed uh, 360 degrees. But why has it been changing? Because consumer is changing. <laughs> so our habits are changing. Yeah. So we are, me and you, I'm sure that probably sometimes at one o'clock in the morning, we still do some sort of work or we are just, you know, looking around the internet and then you see something that you like it. You know, having a chatbot there, uh, it means that at that time I can ask something because the chatbot is good, it doesn't sleep. You know, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not, it's funny, it doesn't sleep, it always answers, it's well educated. So it's good, I mean, because the consumer is, is 24 hours, you know, it doesn't stop. And then if I really need to know uh, something very quick and I don't want to wait the day after that the company is open, probably the bot will help you, you know, in that case, to establish that first relation that brings into to engagement and then the relation goes to communication, communication into conversion. So that for me is, is an ABC, is something happening, you know. Uh, so to implement a bot in any sort of a company, if you are B2B or B2C, it does really matter because the only difference is there are more C than B because we are more consumer than business. Uh, that is, is a number. It's, it's not mean saying that. Uh, the, the bot or the chatbot or the conventional bot, it's, it's basically uh, fundamental for any company. But not just for answering stupid questions or quick, easy questions. The idea in marketing or conventional marketing, inbound marketing, is to get that lead. You know, we need to get that lead. Yeah. We need to get that person that is interesting in some moment, even during the night, because the night is a moment. I mean, I don't know my university career during the night time. All, all, all the product. I can't study in the day. It's impossible. Even now, when I have to analyze something of my business, I have to work at night. Because the day to me is a lot of more distraction. It's a lot of light, a lot of people, a lot of noise. Everything distracts me. Night is silent, it's beautiful. So I can stay there like a couple of hours. I do like 10 hours during the day. So if at that time I find something, and that something for me is interesting, I need to understand contacting them and giving that lead. Then then probably we will get into the, into, into compassion. So you find them... These chatbots are on Messenger or WhatsApp. It's not on the website? Also on the website, yeah. Also on the website. I mean, to me, the chatbot should be in any co- even in a landing page. Even yeah. in a landing page. Even something you're doing. You know, you, today the chatbot is easily integrated in, uh, in all the, 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 the content you can create, even on your blog. You know, everywhere can be present. Uh, it's, it's a good thing for the consumer to get in touch with your brand at any yeah. time. How do you choose a chatbot? How do you know it's not gonna, you know, you know when you're on the phone and you're like, talk to a human, talk to a human. <laughs> How do you make sure that a chatbot that you choose for your business well, chatbot, is gonna give somebody chatbot, that experience? In some way, it does exactly what you just said. You know, we all hate getting on the phone and being on the line, uh, answering, you know, one or two, taste one, push one, push two, because it always gets where you don't want to get. Always. Because for some strange reason, you know, whatever created that machine has never been a client of that, of that commerce. So that is the problem, basically, because it's like, oh, my God, there's something... When I had a kid, when I had my, my little kid, I had my push head, you know, when you put your kids. I believe that who invented the push head or who does design the push head has no kid. Because they're so difficult to open and close. I don't know if you ever, you know, experienced that. No, I haven't, but... <laughs> you know, sometimes you will have a friend as a baby and they, they, will, they will ask you, because they will have a baby in their arms and they put in a car, hey, Maeva, can you just double that, that chair? You will never be able to do it. It's just impossible. You know, they put all the basic, yeah. complicated. So don't complicate it, make it easy. But anyway, the chatbot in that sense helps you 
just not getting on the line for hours, staying there forever, uh, create that sense of, uh, you know, you want to kill them, you know, you have no services, and, you know, it's just quick. But, 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 you know, how do you choose a chatbot? Great, great, great question. Uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, confusion also about chatbot. Uh, chatbot is not an answering machine to start with. You know, there are different chatbots. Chatbot based on uh, semantic analysis, a chatbot based on word recognition. Of course, today, if somebody will, you know, everybody will listen to us, if I have to, I suggest a chatbot, I will suggest our chatbot, of course. Yeah. Also because it's, of course, based on semantic analysis. What does it mean, semantic analysis? Semantic analysis is what made human understand the meaning of something, you know? And uh, a natural language process, which is based uh, the chatbot with semantic analysis, really understand what the meaning. For example, uh, what's your name? Uh, how do they call you? Means for us the same thing. But for a chatbot, based on the word recognition, are two different questions. I will never answer. Uh, so you have a, a disambiguation, disambiguation. So words that mean something in a context and other thing in another context. So if you don't have that semantic analysis, your question will be not understand by the chat or it will answer in a bad way. But the thing with the semantic analysis requires a lot of data, basically. Because you know the chatbot learns from data. Doesn't learn from it's not a miracle. You put it there and in two minutes it understands your business and the stuff. So it requires your 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 attention, a lot of attention, creating a chatbot, a, a very functional chatbot, requires a lot of time. A lot of time, a lot of data, a uh, lot of uh, love, because you really need to get uh, work on it every day. And uh, you know, I always make example because example is the most easy thing to make people understand. I was taking my kids, you know, you don't have kids, have to. Now they, they, they become uh, teenagers. But, you know, a kid, when he's a, when he's a month old, he doesn't say anything. He cries. Because it's the only way he knows to get your attention. If he's, uh, if he's starving, if he's hungry, if he has to go to the toilet, if something is, is pain somewhere, he's crying. He doesn't know how to tell you. So for the, with the time, he starts saying milk. So for milk, you give, you give him some milk. Then, you know, growing up is telling you, I want milk. But to say I want milk, because you're telling him, when he says milk, you tell him, what do you want, baby? You want milk? And he would say, you want milk. No, no, I want milk. Ah, okay, I want milk. Good. And then he starts to understand that the milk you give it to him is too cold or too hot. And you say, hey, dad, I want, a I want cold milk. But to get there, you need four years. Yeah, a chatbot hopefully doesn't take also for you. No, it doesn't take yeah. long. The idea is you need to, you know, you need yeah. to put information. You need to answer. Uh, uh, you need to answer to question it does not answer because a chatbot will tell you, oh wow, oh, wow, I don't know this answer. Get back tomorrow and probably I will better. I will know the answer. That alert to you, you have to go and fill up that answer because more the data you put in, a, a better is. So a chatbot is good when the choice of the chatbot is great, and when you give him uh, like uh, a, a task. Why it's been created for? You need to have a specialized task. You know, if you think you're gonna put the chatbot there because you can sack an employer and just replace an employer with that, that's the biggest mistake you can ever yeah. make. Because it doesn't apply, it does, it does replace no workers. It helps you, but it doesn't replace you anymore. Okay, so if I get a chatbot, you start training it, for example, by people coming to your website and asking it questions, and then you receive the data, you receive the question, you give it the answer, and then with time, it's able to answer frequently asked questions, basically. Well, you, you, have, a, you have a knowledge base. You yeah. should have already a question and answer, Q&A. So you can drop that in, and you already learn, because natural language process, uh, all of the stuff they understand, you know, they, they, they take his, uh, data, 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 and they start working. Then, yes, the feed comes from the public, gets there. Yeah. That's where the feeds come. Because if I ask you something, a, a, the channel does not answer, probably it's on the Quibo, you can say, listen, oh, thank you very much. This question to me, uh, it's new. 
But anyway, this is a landing page. Give me your data and I will get answer to you tomorrow or somebody will get in contact. Okay. Don't, don't forget I'm a bot. Yeah. At the same time, you have to go to that question because you will have an alert, an alert and say, okay, this is the answer. So yes, the next time, this answer will be done in a different way. Okay, now in English, I, I cannot put the main example uh, of different questions that have the same meaning. Uh, of course, the next time, probably the, that question that has the same meaning, it does not answer, but whatever you're gonna answer with the same uh, with the same answer that the first one, bingo. That's exactly. when the machine starts to understand. Ah, okay, this, this word in this context means this. So it's when the natural language process gets understand and you know, step by step, it becomes efficient. You know, you need the time. Of course, you don't need four years to be efficient, but you need data. So yeah. how much is the traffic to your web? How many people get that chatbot? Yeah. To answer a question that you have no thinking. You know, it, it depends. It's relative, it's relative to your traffic. And forgive my ignorance, I've never used a chatbot before. Uh, I mean, I've used it as a consumer, but I haven't used it as a marketer. Um, but I, mean, I will give one to you so you can implement in your Okay, I would love to play around with it. I My will. question was, how, how tech savvy do you have to be to start using a, a chatbot? Do you need to hire some consulting to set it up for you? It's, it's a dummy level. Oh, dummy level. Perfect for me. <laughs> I always hey, you know what, Maila? I always hate this, uh, you know, this 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 thing. It's a dummy level, you know. It's it's like for everybody. I mean, don't worry, it's easy. I mean, it's the easiest thing we did. The fact one of our uh, one of our uh, strongest point uh, is the easiness of creating campaign. In fact, that's what I say. Things I want to say is the people will listen to this. I believe uh, they will they will know. This year, in July 2019, we've been uh, we've been listed by Gartner and the mobile in the Magic Quadrant for mobile pla mobile marketing platform, being one of the 20 more effective mobile platform uh, in the world. Congratulations! And, um, yes, that's great, and received a uh, honorable mention to be the only European platform in all of this. And this is because, of course, for the easiness uh, of, of the easy use of the solution and how we applicate to the solution a methodology called conversion marketing. I want to give a platform to you. Yes, I want to try it. It's funny because I come from a background of translation. I'm a translator uh, by, by birth. <laughs> I don't know, my parents are translators. So uh, in the translation world, we are all very apprehensive of AI. You know, we have machine translation, which also there's new machine translation technology that has neural learning, semantic input, all these same things that you were talking about. And we're very trained to be like, no, 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 it's going to take our jobs. It's so bad. I don't agree that it's going to take our jobs, but it's something that we have in our way of thinking. So I've always been a little bit apprehensive about chatbots as well. And I feel like after this conversation, I, I really want to try it. <laughs> no, the technology, has, uh, the technology has improved a lot. A lot but yeah. the way, today, most of the bad Okay, translation agency, but you know, very low level. They put on a Google translator. They put yeah, they use machine they translation. Really? It's not it's not a, the same kind of thing. I mean, I no, never no, think no, that I translators yeah. will be replaced by machines unless you're providing machine level quality. And same with the chatbots, it's just not the same service. Like you said, it's a supplement. It's something that gets people's questions answered right away, but that doesn't mean that they don't want to also talk to you after. I think, you know, talking about machine, this is something really I'm, I'm reading a lot because uh, many people ask me the same thing. Hey, do you think machine is going to replace human? Ooh. And uh, I don't think so because machine doesn't have something that makes humans unique. Yeah. Which is sentiment. You know, you have the sentiment label on machines, but you have no sentiment. And that is impossible to replace. It's something that doesn't even come from our brain. It comes from our heart. Machine doesn't have heart. So, you know, uh, sensation, sentiment, uh, that's something a machine will never replace. And uh, uh, of course, when you translate, I don't know, I'm not a translator. I mean, I'm uh, a, a little, you know, less than you because you speak at least six or seven languages. No, I only in... speak four. Oh, you only speak four. Okay, great. Okay, sorry. <laughs> no, I don't know many people. Three and a half. Three and a half. <laughs> three and a half. Well, I speak four, basically. <laughs> so, well, so I thought you speak some more languages. Okay. No. No, no. 
Well, we can speak English or French or whatever, Spanish. You know? yeah. well, you don't speak I'm Italian. Italian. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn Italian. I meant to do it during quarantine, but that didn't happen. <laughs> well, I mean, there, there are too many things you want to do during quarantine. So and this lockdown, probably <laughs> done something better. So, yeah, the, 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 the technology is getting fast. You know, it's really getting fast in all the aspects of our life. Of course, it will replace a lot of human stupid work. For example, yeah. uh, I went to Paris uh, last trip. By the way, what was your last trip? Colombia? Where do you went? My last trip was to Colombia in February. Ah. Well, I went in January, came back in February. I'm, I'm sort of a big follower of you. I remember your last trip. I don't know how many people will do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. I mean, I've just been in yeah, yeah. since. Yeah. No, because you told me that you get in with your dad. I something. think it was right, right before, or right after we met at, at Mataró, or right before or something. Yeah, like yeah, that. no, yeah. no. Okay, I'll tell you why I remember, because I've got still good memory. You have good memory. Despite my age is getting, you know, close to the 50, then to the 30. Uh, <laughs> because I invited you yeah. to be a speaker in one of my events. Yes. And you say, I have to go to Colombia because of my father or whatever. You have to meet your father too. I say, oh, shit, that's a, such a, you know, such a, a, a lack thing. But anyway, that's why I remember Colombia. Okay. But still, I'm a big fan of you. Anyway, I'm a big fan of everybody. Is smart and, th and things to do, they try to do things right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, my last trip was to Paris. I went, went to Paris, I went to this business center, and I get in, and I had a, a big television in front of me. Door was could open because in France, you know, because being a French, you have this code, you know, the code. Yeah, yeah. So, when you go to any house in France, there's crazy people, and an office, they give you the code. So, you, you don't, you know, you get in the code and you get in. And then, this virtual assistant on the television, they probably has a sensation, a sensorial uh, things that whatever the doors open, say, Bonjour, bienvenue, buenos dias, uh, good morning, welcome. Oh, wow. Uh, so, and then ask me, uh, what floor are you going? So, and you have the selection, first floor, second floor, third floor. Uh, what company? No, what company are you going to? I say, I go to this company. I say, okay, third floor, second door, uh, right, right hand side from the lift. Wow. I mean, okay, that, that's fine. That yeah. job will be replaced by a machine. Of course. Yeah. I mean, what the hell is need? Portel. Yeah. You know, in Spain, we have no portel. What is it? What, uh, keepers? What, what do you call it? Oh, the, um, um, the, uh, the, uh, <laughs> there is no uh, word in English. Yeah, there's a, there is a word. I'm just like totally drawing a blank right now. <laughs> well, the keepers, the keepers, whatever they yeah, call. We'll just call them that. Then you, when you remember, so I think, tell me because I, I never, I never find an English name. Yeah. yeah, but these people are down to the 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 the, 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 yeah. the things and they tell the you what the floor is. Anyway, go, continue. Well, so that that's will be replaced by the, by the technology, by the yeah. virtual assistant. But everyone relates to sales like we do. Everybody relates to communication. To it's impossible, man. You know, me and you we get this contact because you know we, we met personally and we understood that you know, wow, you know, it's a spatial person. A machine would never understand if you are spatial or spatial. We understand what you say and calculating the the, the amount of data you're telling them without having sentiment. You know, without yeah. having this. Uh, you know, this feel, okay, I feel this person is right. You know, that's could never replace, it's impossible because it doesn't come from the mind that the artificial intelligence is replacing, it comes from the heart. So Absolutely. people, don't worry, do a work that, <laughs> do it's some work okay. that, <laughs> don't do stupid right. jobs, stupid jobs will be replaced, that's for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for this chat and conversation. Where should people connect with you if they want to find you online? Well, they, uh, if they find me online, I'm present in LinkedIn, in Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. Max Brigida, easy, all the full channel. You will find me. Uh, our webpage is uh, uh, adamcloud.com. So you will find me there, but all, you can find me, of course, through my email. Uh, yes, I will be dropping all the links anyway, so yeah. they'll be able to find you through this. Well, I mean, this has been very short. I mean, you know, we probably could have spoken hours. But, I think we know, could have spoken hours. <laughs> yeah. no, I'm like, okay, well, uh, people don't want to listen to us for hours, or maybe they do. I don't know. We could we could continue the conversation in another time as well. Yeah, Thank yeah, you yeah. So much, Max. That was a pleasure right. to speak to you. And. It was uh, my pleasure. 
Thank you, everybody, for listening. And uh, we'll see you at the next interview series. Goodbye. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Flying Cat Marketing Series. If you enjoy this interview, please give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues, and subscribe to this channel. Stay tuned because next week I'll be interviewing another leader in the SaaS and startup world talking about their challenges and achievements. See you there.